Mormon Church founder Joseph Smith Jr.'s personal bodyguard, Oren Porter Rockwell, is remembered for his unwavering loyalty and generosity, alongside his persistence and ruthlessness as a lawman in Utah. The details of Porter Rockwell's life are somewhat unclear due to the absence of a diary. Birthdate discrepancies exist, with sources suggesting either June 28, 1813 or June 25, 1815. However, what remains certain is that as a young man, he forged a close friendship with Joseph Smith, who was slightly older. Growing up as neighbors to the Smith family in Massachusetts, Rockwell supported Smith's endeavor to publish the Book of Mormon by selling berries and wood to raise funds. Following Smith to New York, the Rockwell family became among the earliest adherents of the Latter-day Saint movement, and Porter was baptized on the day the church was founded in April 1830, making him the youngest member at the age of 16. Upon the relocation of the New York branch to Ohio, Porter was dispatched to Jackson County, Missouri, which was intended to be the central gathering place for church members. It was during his time in Missouri that Porter honed his skills with a gun and entered into matrimony with his first wife in 1832. Additionally, Porter became a suspect in the attempted assassination of former Governor Lilburn Boggs during his stay in Missouri. On October 27, 1838, Governor Boggs issued Executive Order 44, famously referred to as the Extermination Order, which aimed to expel Mormons from Missouri through any means necessary, including the use of violence. Boggs's order was a response to what he perceived as the open and avowed defiance of the laws. Amid the conflict between Mormons and their neighbors, known as the Missouri-Mormon War, the state did not welcome the presence of the church members, as tensions had been escalating due to the economic and electoral growth of the church community, coupled with Joseph Smith's stance against slavery. The culmination of these issues was marked by newspaper articles from Independence, Missouri, in 1833, and Missouri public officials published a manifesto in July of the same year, which included the following excerpt. We, the undersigned citizens Jackson County, believing that an important crisis is at hand, as regards our civil society, in consequence, a pretended religious sect of people that have settled, and are still settling in our county, styling themselves Mormons and intending, as we do, to rid our society, peaceably if we can, forcibly if we must, and believing, as we do, that the arm of the civil law does not afford us a guarantee, or at least a sufficient one, against the evils which are now inflicted upon us, and seem to be increasing by the said religious sect, deem it expedient, and of the highest importance, to form ourselves into a company for the better and easier accomplishment of our purpose a purpose which we deem it almost superfluous to say, is justified as well by the law of nature as by the law of self-preservation. Church elders would frequently gather at Porter's residence to discuss safeguarding members from the Missouri mobs that were persecuting them. However, their efforts proved futile, as they were eventually forced out of Jackson County and compelled to relocate to Illinois. According to the church, Porter chose to stay in Missouri to ensure the secure departure of other Latter-day Saints from the state. In May of 1842, the former Governor Lilburn Boggs was shot by an unidentified assailant. The crime was swiftly attributed to Porter Rockwell as retaliation for the executive order issued a few years prior. Porter spent eight months in jail awaiting trial, but was acquitted due to a lack of evidence. Following his release, Porter traveled to Nauvoo, Illinois, to reunite with the rest of the church. He arrived on Christmas Day in 1843 and unannounced went to Joseph Smith's home. With his hair extending well past his shoulders, Smith initially mistook him for an inebriated Missourian and was in the process of ordering his removal before recognizing him as a friend. According to the church during this encounter, church leader Smith assured Porter that if he remained loyal to the church and refrained from cutting his hair, he would be spared from death by a bullet. It is reported that from that day onward, Porter wore his long hair braided and tucked into a bob at the back of his neck. However, another account from the church suggests that he later cut his hair to assist a widow experiencing hair loss due to typhoid fever. After the assassination of Joseph Smith in June of 1844, Porter is accused of shooting and killing Frank Worrell, the leader of the group of men responsible for Smith's death in September of 1845. The church argues that it was an act of self-defense, 
and some claim that it was carried out on the orders of the new leader of the saints Brigham Young to divert persecution from those still in Nauvoo to himself. Rockwell was acquitted the following spring. Porter followed Brigham Young to Utah, and in 1849 he was appointed Deputy Marshal of Great Salt Lake City. During his tenure in law enforcement, he was known for his unwavering determination. Describing the changes in life over 20 years in Salt Lake City, an article in the Reno Evening Gazette in February of 1891, while addressing the conflict between prospectors and the church, stated, The prospectors made their headquarters principally at a hotel kept by Gentiles, who, like all other newcomers, were regarded as intruders and trespassers, and were watched like thieves in every move they made by the Mormon spies and church hirelings. Then it was that Porter Rockwell, with his long, wild locks flowing over his shoulders, and his running mate Brig Hampton, bore the reputation of being the two leading destroying angels of the Mormon church. Though widely thought to have killed numerous men as a gunfighter, religious enforcer, and deputy marshal, Rockwell asserted to a crowd in 1869, I never killed anyone who didn't need killing. Nevertheless, many regarded him as an outlaw, suspecting him in the murders of several individuals in service to the church. This suspicion extended to the Aiken Affair, an episode in 1857 involving six professional gamblers from California who were allegedly murdered by Rockwell while being escorted out of Utah Territory. Rockwell was indicted for the incident about 20 years later but passed away before his trial. Porter is not solely remembered as a lawman. He is also recognized as a notable guide and mountain man who, at one point, managed the Hot Springs Hotel and Brewery in southern Salt Lake Valley. In 1870, author Fitzhugh Ludlow would write about Porter Rockwell, stating, But he was that most terrible instrument that can be handled by fanaticism. A powerful physical nature welded to a mind of very narrow perceptions, intense convictions, and changeless tenacity. In his build, he was a gladiator. In his humor, a Yankee lumberman. In his memory, a bourbon. In his vengeance, an Indian. A strange mixture, only to be found on the American continent. Rockwell passed away from natural causes on June 9, 1878, and he rests in the Salt Lake City Cemetery. During his funeral, upcoming church leader Joseph F. Smith remarked, They say he was a murderer. If he was, he was a friend of Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, and he remained loyal to them and to his commitments. He has gone to heaven, and apostates can go to hell.